Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, and this is week number two in what I call Reviews at Midnight, simply because I'm reviewing these movies after midnight and then uploading them about as quick as I can. So uh, tonight, tonight I want to talk about Motel Hell from 1980, directed by Kevin Connor. And before I say anything else, this is coming up a few days early. Generally speaking, my reviews for this series will always go up to the best of my ability Saturday night uh, of the week, right? Saturday night. But I'm um, going to Florida uh, tomorrow for a few days and uh, right through the weekend. So uh, I figured instead of skipping a week, especially this early on, I figured I'd just get, get it up early. So, uh, Motel Hell, Kevin Connor, and uh, maybe not the most celebrated career, uh, but he did go on to uh, direct a film called The House Where Evil Dwells, 1982. Um, now, this film is written by uh, brothers, uh, Robert and Stephen Jaffe. And uh, Robert, though, is most notably known for writing up the screenplay for Demon Seed, 1977. And... Uh, but maybe most notably from this film is its cinematographer, Thomas Del Ruth. And, well, before I go any further, this is the uh, Scream Factory edition of uh, the film and the Blu-ray. And it uh, looks great. And uh, that's what I got going on behind me. And in fact, just watched it again a few minutes ago. And, uh, but anyways, uh, Thomas Del Ruth has a great interview on here, and uh, I don't know what it is, but of late I am finding um, interviews with uh, the cinematographer just more and more interesting. And this one was some good stuff, boy. This was some really good stuff. But uh, he uh, he had man, he had an incredible career. He would go on most. Uh, why well, say most notably, but maybe the maybe the one film that stands in most contrast is The Breakfast Club. Um, but other films like Quicksilver and uh, Stand By Me, um, The Running Man, and for me personally, I had no idea until I was doing a little bit of reading that he would also uh, shoot um, or photograph the pilot episode for the X-Files TV show, which... Uh, still stands as my most favorite, favorite TV series ever, hands down. Um, so quite a celebrated uh, uh, career this guy uh, would go on to have. So he shot uh, or photographed um, Motel Hell, and then he would go on and do some really, really, really cool stuff. Um, but this film, man, this film stars Rory Calhoun, who really carries this film. He probably, more than anyone else in this cast, uh, he he is the most fun to watch, um, and he of course plays Farmer Vincent, and uh, Nancy Parsons of course plays Ida, his sister. Paul Link plays Bruce. He's the town sheriff, and of course he's the younger brother of Vincent. Uh, Nina Axelrod, her name uh, she she plays a girl named Terry, and um, talk about that in the plot here real quick. And of course uh, it also uh, showcases Wolfman Jack as uh, Reverend Billy <laughs> and uh, Ratzenberger, uh, Cliff from Cheers has a little role in here. So uh, a lot of reasons, man, um, a lot of reasons. Now the plot real quick before I talk about why I love this movie so much. Uh, really what you basically have here, and I wanna try to stay away from spoilers as much as I can, but what you really do have here is a, is a, is a black comedy or, or a satire black comedy um, it is really, it is what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre will become in 1986 in a weird way. Um, of course, this comes out in 80, right? And uh, Texas had come out just some few years prior. And even though Hooper, um, you know, put forth this notion of, you know, the, the black comedic elements, the humor, some of the really dark humor, um, that movie is, man, that, about, that, that movie is about as serious as a vibe as you're going to get. But with this film, man, this film really is a black comedy. 
um, and, it, and it really does carry some, uh, some great humor in balancing out uh, some of the more distressful things that are happening in this film. In fact, it's, uh, uh, it's weird. But anyway, so basically what you have here is uh, a brother and a sister who are basically managing this motel while carrying on a uh, sort of a meat business, side business, in which they showcase uh, the best meat in the county, man. I mean, nobody puts out the meat like Farmer Vincent. Um, and, uh, and there's a reason for it, right? It is the uh, ingredients that go into this, into his meat. And uh, so it doesn't take a brain surgeon, right, to figure that one out. But this movie does have some, uh, I mean, it is uh, different uh, in how they approach the subject matter um, and how, uh, just how they handle different things within the scope of the film, which make, it just makes it a blast to watch, especially if you've never seen it before. And uh, there are certain elements that when I was a kid, man, see, as a kid, I never caught the black comedy aspect. I didn't understand that or the humor. This movie freaked me out when I was a kid. And there were certain elements of it that really freaked me out more than others. And I'm gonna try to kind of stay away from that, but say that if you've never seen this, just for those really unique aspects um, of how they approach certain things. It, it's, it's like, you know, in a weird way, it's kind of like a, a version of grim fairy tales in a way. In a way. It's, um, you know, where um, the, Sawyer fan, the Sawyer clan is, is sort of at, you know, they're sort of at their, their desperate end. And uh, this is a family that has unraveled and they're just basically clinging on to some sort of sick existence or something where um, Vincent and his sister Ida they're um, they're living the high life really I mean it, life is good for them and uh, as far as Vincent's concerned is they're, they're just helping they're helping out by doing what they're doing you know removing some of the uh, you know removing, you know some people uh, you know out of the population and uh, you know whatnot but it's it's, it's just a totally different approach and how they handle it. Now, as a kid, uh, I think it was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was episode, or not episode, but it was uh, Fangoria issue number nine. I had that issue when I was a kid, and in fact, uh, got in trouble reading it in school, and of course, it showcased uh, the cover uh, was for uh, Motel Hell, which uh, showed Vincent, of course, we don't know who that is, right, if you hadn't seen the movie, but he's donning the, the famous pig head, you know, with the chainsaw, you know, and uh, and that was, uh, man, that was a prized magazine as a kid. I have no idea what happened. I got a lot of my fangos, but not that one for some reason. But, um, so yeah, or even as a kid, this movie was with me, but as I grew older and uh, eventually Scream Factory put this film out, right, because for the longest time, I didn't even have this movie um, in my collection. Now, I know there's a, there's a Midnight Movies, um, I think, has a double feature with Deranged and Motel Hell that's out there. Um, but for whatever reason, I just never, I don't know, as much as I wanted the movie in my collection, I just never, I never got it. And until the Scream Factory edition came out. Now, Arrow, I'm pretty sure, has an edition too. And if you're not ready just to go out and buy this thing, though, I'm pretty, I'm almost positive it's Prime. It's on Amazon Prime right now for free. So you can check it out for free. Um, but man, it's, uh, yeah, Kevin Connor, he's a British director, and um, he uh, was, uh, I almost want to say Toby Hooper was uh, approached and turned it down, or somehow just things didn't work out. But um, Kevin Connor decided, you know, the only way he would do it is if he could approach it as a black comedy. And they agreed, and uh, it, you know, it's a, it's, man, it's it's a classic film, and it's uh, it's it does if you if you allow certain elements of it to kind of settle in and really think about it, um, or put your place, or put yourself in the place of one of these victims, it's a pretty terrifying thing to really think about. But how they approach it, it's not like the Texas Chainsaw, where man, that's just. Um, that, that's tough, man. It's a tough, it's a classic. It's awesome, but it's a tough movie. This, it's almost like a, it's almost like it, 
it just opens up its arms and welcomes you in and just said, yeah, come on in, take a walk around, soak it up, look around. It, it has this friendly vibe about it. And uh, it doesn't really, really creep you out unless you just really start thinking about certain aspects of this. And uh, of course, uh, it is 1980, so it's, uh, it's a unique film. And quite frankly, I don't know if they could get away with this type of film today and how they approach it and how they handle some of the material in there. Uh, without really getting in too much, but uh, yeah, Motel Hell. Um, actually, technically, it's Motel Hello, but the O at the end of Hello sort of kind of fuzzes in and out on the uh, on the neon sign, and so that's where you kind of get Motel Hell from, right? And uh, so, anyways, um, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, Loved it as a kid, and uh, I, I love it now. I appreciate it probably more now. Um, and uh, it, it's got some, uh, yeah, it's, it's just got some great things, man. It's got some great things. So, uh, yeah, check it out if you've never checked it out. And if you have, and it's something that, you know, you remember you liked and you want to revisit, or you're even, you know, in the, you know, going to pick it up, definitely uh, grab the Scream Factory edition. Um, it's got some great stuff on there, commentaries and uh, just a lot of make, the making of the film and just uh, a whole bunch of stuff, um, right? And uh, so, yeah, Motel Hell, Kevin Connor, 1980, week number two, on mid, uh, reviews at midnight. And uh, next week being it the last Saturday of the month, or yeah, the month, I'm going to find something I've never seen before on Shutter and throw it in the spotlight. And so I have no idea yet what I'm going to do, but I got to start looking here soon, right? So and that's how we're going to kind of approach it. Um, the first three weeks of the month, kind of like whatever, there may be some uh, thematic qualities to the month at times, maybe not. But at the end, I'm going to always try to reserve that last Saturday night for, uh, for a spotlight on Shutter. I, quite frankly, I don't watch Shudder enough, and I need to. So, anyways, we'll close it out there and uh, check it out, man. Motel Hell. Some good stuff right there, man. Good stuff. As always, go Bills.